Statistics and Excel. Histogram versus bar chart. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with Statistics and Excel. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon left-hand side, OneNote and Excel presentation tab, 1030 histogram versus bar chart. We will also try to put the transcripts in OneNote as well. And if you go to the view tab, the immersive reader tool, you can actually change the language on the transcripts if you so choose and either read or listen to the transcripts in multiple languages desktop version of OneNote here we have the information on the left hand side our data imagining it to be yearly salary or income of employees at a corporation we've already ordered the data from smallest to largest in other words instead of being in order by like alphabetical order of the employees we've taken the data and put it from smallest to largest which is a typical thing to do as a first step and sorting the data when we're trying to pull information from it. Now we wanna think about the relationship between a histogram and a bar chart. So we've taken a look at some histograms in prior presentation. Here's one that we built from this data set in a prior presentation. So we wanna actually use the bar chart and think about it like a bar chart and how we can use Excel's function of a bar chart to create, in essence, a histogram. And that will give us a better sense of kind of the relationship between what the similarities and differences are. So up top, we just have some of our standard data up top. So you'll recall that the mean or the average is can be done in a manual method, uh, or it can be done with a function. So if we used an Excel function in order to take the mean or the average, we can use the average function, so equals average, and then we would just select the data. So here's the data in the table, and that would give us the average. If we did the manual calculation, we can then say that it's going to be the sum, meaning we add up all the data. To do that, we can use the trusty sum function equals the sum of all the data, and then we can count the data, meaning counting one, two, three, four, all of the data, and in Excel, we can use the trusty equals count function to do that and then select all the data, which is nice. And then, of course, we're going to divide that out. If we used Excel, we would take this cell, which is referenced by the D5 divided by this cell, referenced by D6, 3,630, 400 divided by 51 gives us the average 71,184, which matches what we got with the function. And then if we take the median, we can do that in Excel by saying equals the median or the second quartile. We could use quartiles if we want, but the median is more common. And if we were gonna do it in a manual method, remember, it's just like Rocky's trainer, uh, the boxer, Rocky's trainer, if, if it's an old movie, but you hit the one in the middle. When you see three of them out there, you hit the one in the middle. That's the advice. Uh, so, so Rocky's trainer was a, was a fan of using the median, hit the one in the middle. So then if we look at our, our histogram, the major components of the histogram are the buckets down below that we've discussed in prior presentations. So you can see here the definition of the buckets are now 2,000 apart, and we have 15 of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 buckets, and they're separate, and they're spanning 2,000, 55,000 to 57,000. So you can see that in this range, we only have the one data point in it, and then we have nothing from 57 all the way up to, uh, to what, 67. And then at 67 to 69, we have seven, 69 to 71, 19, 71 to 73, 15, 73 to 75, seven. Now note that if you were to try to select this data in Excel and create a bar chart instead of a histogram, then you're gonna run into problems because the bar chart, what it wants to do is try to put all of these data sets kind of on the X axis and then, and then basically say how often they, each one of them appear. But you can't have all of these separately listed uh, because, because uh, they, they might, you, you might not have two numbers that are the same, right? Like if you, if you had a small set of data where you had a lot of repetition in whatever it is that was coming up, 
then you could use the bar chart and it would basically give you the proper x axis but here what we want to do is say a range we have to take this information and make a range from it like 55,000 to 57,000 so that we have the appropriate bucket and then we can have a, something like a this histogram looks a lot like a bar chart so you might say hey I could do that myself like I could just make my own buckets I can make these ranges and I can count how much are in the range and and then I can use the bar chart function to create a histogram and that if you, so let's see what that would look like that will give you an idea of the similarities between again a bar chart and a histogram and also sometimes it's useful to do that process to actually make your own buckets create your own histogram because if you wanted to put like two histograms on top of each other sometimes that's easier to do with like a bar chart than a histogram so let's see how we can construct this this histogram using like a bar chart method uh, if we take our information on the left hand side we could start with the smallest point which would be 55 so the 55 is the first bucket I'm going to bring it down to 49 however just for that first bucket and then I'm going to go to to the 57 and I'll show you why when we do the function and then from there we're just going to keep on going up by 2000 so you can see these this range goes from 57 to 59 to 61 uh, to 63 so all I do with a formula here is just take the prior one starting at this point 57,000 plus 2,000 is 59,000 plus 2,000 is 61,000 plus uh, 2,000 is 63,000 and if I had a formula here that just said equals the one above it plus 2,000 I can drag that formula down and it'll give us uh, a, it'll be able to to give us all of our numbers so these are the beginning